Greetings, boils and ghouls, and welcome to another spectacular episode of Excess Gaming Podcast. A very special podcast episode because we're celebrating some Halloween. And join with me, as always, is my wonderful ghoulish co-host, Mr. James Grusom. What's up, James? Man, I, I do a ghoulish laugh, but I'm just I'm too tired amidst all <laughs> the, uh, the, the quarantine uh, packages, or corn Christmas, as we call it, and uh, Prime Day, and uh, massive, massive political mailings, which we're not going to get political, but it would say, hey, go vote. You know, I think it's pretty cool that more people have voted uh, early, I think, than voted at all last year. Uh, you should go do it. And also, you know, it's really more important to focus on uh, your local stuff because that's really uh, what affects people more. They always focus on the, the bigger picture, they think. Uh, but, you know, go do that. But I do know y'all are sick of getting those political mailings because uh, the customers are sick of it. You're getting six to eight. We've had people actually offer us money to not deliver it to them, which <laughs> uh, <laughs> we can't do. Our manager, actually, I give him props, man. He was out there delivering with us, and someone offered him 10 bucks to not deliver that shit anymore. And he was like, man, I'm sorry. So, you know, go vote. And uh, I hope everybody's still able to participate, uh, you know, in, in Halloween. I think some areas may have trick-or-treating. You may not. I'm not sure the haunted house down the street from me uh, that we always do every year is still going. Uh, and I'm still going to be giving out candy, man. I'm still going to try. Like, I, it's going to be interesting to see how many people are out there. Uh, it's really a shame because, you know, it's a daylight savings, uh, extra time. It's a Saturday, man. Like, what what a night for Halloween. And yet this year has, like, fucked it. You know, it, it's just like what, what, what a cap, you know, to the end. Yeah. But uh, I hope you all are doing well. And uh, as typical around this time of season, we have a very dear friend of ours who always appears on this show. He has uh, many things. He's a singer in the Casket Creatures. He has an awesome candle company, and he uh, makes movies and does all kinds of other really cool shit. He's a really awesome dude, and we love him. And we have uh, Ryan Cadaver with us once again this year. Dude, thank you guys so much for having me back, man. I love being on the show. It's my, it's like a highlight of my year every year. <laughs> yeah, it's like, it's like, it's not Halloween until we have an Excess Gaming podcast episode with Ryan Cadaver. Like I was like telling James, like, oh man, because you know it, things have been getting so crazy. Like time's been kind of speeding up on me. And I looked and I'm like, oh crap, it's almost Halloween. We got to get a hold of Ryan and get him on the show. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it, yeah, this year has totally flown by. Like, it feels like it was just summer, and now yeah. it's already, like, Halloween. It's like, what the fuck? Indeed, indeed. And, uh, you know, for, for our new listeners or folks that may not be uh, familiar with you, Ryan, uh, and, I, I mean, James introduced you with pretty well, but, you know, let, let the listeners know exactly what Ryan Cadaver is all about. Yeah, um, so I am an avid gamer. That is like the main thing I have in common with my fellow brethren that listen to this show and are on this show. Uh, is uh, I'm a, a huge gamer. I've been a gamer my whole life. Uh, I'm very into horror. I started with like horror games. That was like my big thing. Uh, I still love horror gaming. And um, yeah, aside from that, I uh, I co-direct uh, Joe Striker. It's an action movie, and we have another movie that we've been filming off and on with all the weird times it's been hard to just like go balls out but you know yeah. we're doing little stuff here and there and slowly assembling it over the past you know year and a half so uh so yeah i'll have a new movie coming out uh hopefully some next year and uh yeah the casket creatures we're a hard punk band um and uh I, you know yeah we, ha we have a new album out ish new ish it kind of came out and then the the world kind of stopped so <laughs> yeah so, uh, but yeah, so, you know, yeah, we, we got a bunch of stuff going on as much as we can possibly safely have going on. Indeed. Indeed. I mean, that's what you gotta kind of do. You gotta kind of keep yourself busy in all these times. And, uh, you know, in, in the world of gaming, uh, I was actually looking at the news and I mean, there's not a whole lot of news has been going out, been going on. Uh, I guess the biggest thing right now is uh, of course the new consoles the ps5 xbox one uh or xbox series x uh let me ask you ryan real quick what what are you going are, are you going ps5 or series x so far um so i've been a playstation guy from like day one i've had an a, i had the original xbox i had an xbox 360 um i didn't have an xbox one at any point which uh, i heard nothing but good things i just didn't really have the need for one mm -hmm. um but uh, but this year, 
it's probably going to be the first year I'm switching over to Xbox because that Game Pass is so tempting. And a lot of the games that I love on PlayStation are starting to come over. You know, there's certain ones like Yakuza and stuff are coming over to Xbox. And it's like, well, shit, there's less and less reason to be like, at least to be adamant about one or the other. Mm -hmm. Truth be told, I'll probably eventually get both. Um, yeah. Pro I'm I'm assuming I'm going to get both, but uh, but for now I have the Xbox Series S uh, pre-ordered, and uh, that's going to be my little uh, Game Pass machine, and then you know eventually I'll get a PS5 with a disc drive, so I'll have the the digital Xbox and the the disc PlayStation. That's my goal, at least. Yeah, it's really nice to have that option, you know, with that and all the like, you know, the lower prices. You know, now we're seeing some more with the S, you know, and maybe not be quite as powerful and run, you know, as full as the Series X or as the PlayStation it's supposed to run the same. But I mean, still, like, really, you can't beat that. And like I said, if you have another friend that has one, too, uh, I, you know, I'm already married with my Game Pass with a, a friend of mine, as I've mentioned before. But, you know, if you have a, another friend that has one, too, dude, that, or what is it, Game Pass, Game Share. Okay. Game Share is amazing because, I mean, like, especially like I said, he's a good friend. You guys tell each other like, "Hey, I'm gonna get this game. You get this, and you trade off." And it's like, you just you, it, it's like having you know, like a game store, and it's That's like awesome. literally like letting a friend borrow a game back in the day. It's like, sure, you don't fully like own it, but I mean, you know, as long as you're friends, especially later in life, lots of times you don't lose as many friends later on. You know, it's a good solid friendship, and it's like you have this amazing list, and you can trade off. You know, who, you know, someone gets this game, you get that. I was already looking at the list. And I'm like, oh, dude, I'm like, I'm going to get that. I'm going to get that. And he's like, I'll get this one. And it's just it, really great. So it's like even if a game sucks, uh, you know, at least you both get to, uh, you know, be punished with the suckiness of the game. And you can both try it out. And it doesn't seem like a complete waste of money. Though so it will push you more towards uh, digital because you do have to buy the digital um and yeah. that's might be the only drawback like i said you can't trade it in but you know your friend also gets to play it and have it too so it's, it's really cool that is really cool so it's like if one person's playing it the other person can't is that the only trade-off no 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 no. it's like you just kind of download it to your system oh imagine so if, both if you, you oh wow yeah, yeah imagine if you cut it off or something like i like i don't know if i would i don't fully know the complete details like if we like disconnected it would i lose everything that i got from you know from the game share of his games uh you know maybe i i don't know the complete details but usually as long as it goes on but anything you know you bought you keep now you can play them at the same time it's just you know you both have access you can just do it with only like two people and uh you know they do have to like initially sign into your system so sometimes you know, like i said it comes with a bit of trust you yeah know, i think uh yeah you know to where you have to deal with that but you know, it's like other than that, man, I mean, it's it's really been amazing because my friend had so many games uh, that it's like looking at a game store. Like, I still go on there and find stuff that I'm like, oh, man, I think I'm going to play this. I'm going to play this. Like, it's, you know, because he had like, I don't know, hundreds and hundreds of games. So, like, it was really <laughs> cool. Nice. Yeah. yeah. And for me, you know, like, I've, I've never had like a, um, like, elitism or fanboyism towards any sort of brand or anything like that. Uh, but I, I'm the same way you, you are, Ryan. Uh, you know, I didn't get an Xbox One. It wasn't until James got an Xbox One and we got an Xbox One for my girlfriend's kids that I was just like, man, Microsoft's really on to something. And the more I hear about the Series X, the more I'm just like, man, this is kind of tempting because when you think about it, you know, Series S, and I, I, I explained it to some, to some folks that I work with, I'm like, you know, it's going to be completely backwards compatible. So you can play all of the backlog of Xbox library. Then you got Game Pass, which is pretty much turning into the Netflix of gaming. And then you have xCloud, which xCloud, when this launches, is going to be a way to play your Xbox games on any Windows device or Android phone. So it's going to be pretty much almost like a, a little bit of a, a Switch kind of mentality with the, you know, almost like handheld hybrid sort of thing in that regard. And I'm just like, man, this is sounding really, really tempting. You know, because I'm thinking, I'm like, you know, the PS5 is going to have the exclusives uh, yeah. that I want to play. But at the same time, you know, the Series S is going to be so affordable. It's going to have so many games for me to play that it's going to be just be, it, it's tempting. It's tempting to it was, jump on the Xbox board for sure. Yeah, well, I, it was 299 and I'm like, dude, if 
if I don't like it, like I'm going to easily be able to flip it. Like, you know, like for what I paid, I'm not a scalper, but like, if I don't yeah. like it, like I'll sell it for what I paid for it. Um, but like, I'm, I'm like, dude, two ninety nine is a, a, that's a safe bet. Like that. I'll enjoy it enough to keep it around. Where, where did you get yours pre-ordered from? Uh, Walmart. Walmart. Cause, cause like, I know like it was, you know, chaos that first day. when. It yeah. Happened. The PlayStation, like, I, I kind of like was thinking about pre-ordering the PlayStation, even though I didn't quite have the money, but I was like, I was looking, and then uh, I, I looked the day that they went on sale, and I couldn't even find one anywhere. So, I, you know, the Xbox, I, I didn't have too much trouble. Like, I clicked on a couple sites, and then I found one on Walmart. Yeah, that first day was so chaotic, and it could have been maybe because, like, I, it seemed like, like S's popped up a bit more, but, like, I was clearly going. I was like, well, if I get one like me, I'm going to go ahead and get the X. And, uh, you yeah, know, there was a lot of issues. But I do know GameStop uh, is definitely still carrying on that deal uh, you know, for the X with the payment plan, even after they come out, so people can can still get that. You know, it wasn't just like a one time thing. And I mean, you know, that one, like I said, it, it, if you add everything up, you include the you know the ultimate Game Pass, which is you know fifteen a month in the system. Like they're not making it. You know, it's not like a credit card. It's not a big interest thing. Like it really evens out. So that's awesome. They're not ripping people off and like that. That's still going to yeah. be available. So like, I'm definitely like, if that comes up and I can get one of those on that payment plan, uh, I, I know I'll definitely still, you know, jump on that, uh, you know, for the series X at, you know, 30 bucks a month. I'm like, shit, dude, that's like, that's awesome. You mm-hmm. know? Yeah. And, and my plan basically is, you know, like I said, I'm going to have the, uh, the series S first and, uh, that, that way I can play the new Yakuza on there and like all that stuff. Uh, cyberpunk and all that and then uh eventually when they're more readily available i'll probably get a ps5 with a disc drive because the ps5 is gonna i mean they already have a couple already announced that i'm like god i'm gonna have to have that oh yeah like i've heard i've heard talks about like you know well that demon souls remake looks Mm -hmm. incredible like it looks beautiful yeah also i mean are are you on the board for the final fantasy 16 oh hell yeah dude Dude, especially like with the direction they're going it looks amazing yeah, I, I'm so excited about that. And, uh, you know, also also something that's been going on with the news is the release of the uh, Super Mario Circuit uh, Live, the Mario Kart Live, which is like an interactive Mario Kart RC card home circuit that you can race with your Switch with an RC car and it uses AR cameras. You know, we've talked about that, but this is something that was kind of crazy. I saw this pop up. Uh, right before I started doing the show, and this is from an article from uh, Tom'sHardware.com, a Raspberry Pi Mario Kart Live play this in real life Mario Kart track online. Now, what these folks did is they actually made a couple of Raspberry Pi fours run the Mario Kart Super Circuit, and people are playing online now with it. It's freaking insane. So how, how? So, so I got a breakdown. It, it has the Nintendo Switch to run the game, the uh, Nintendo uh, Mario Kart or Luigi RC car, a Raspberry Pi 4 to turn to Zero, RTG and Zero Gates custom image recognition, an HDMI capture card, a USB sound card to capture the sound, and an Adafruit MO Tricket to emulate the Nintendo Switch controllers. So they're using the Raspberry Pi as a window for online and also to help with the AR technology. Wow. That's that is, incredible. That's insane. I'm like, man, that's that's crazy that people are already like, all right, well, we're, we're tired of just racing around and chasing our cats. Let's play some folks online. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's one of those things. Like, uh, I may have thought about getting it if I had a bigger house, but mm-hmm. like my house is nowhere big enough for that to even be an option. Yeah. I'm like I got carpet. I don't know. Like, does that work on carpet? Yeah, actually, it does. I watched um, uh, JKB. He did a review. He released it today, actually reviewing the uh, the Mario Kart RC cars. And yeah, he was like, you know, he was driving it on carpet. He was driving it on concrete, and he said it ran really well. And it boggles my mind, like uh, this this piece of technology. Because I mean, AR is nothing new. I mean, we all saw the AR cards with the 3DS and you know, we see it with Pokemon Go and stuff like that. But the way they did this and the way you have like those cardboard 
um, like racetrack signs, which is pretty much what they, it's almost like a, a Labo sort of thing where the cardboard has the AR, um, you know, QR codes on it that yeah, kind of seems like a step up from that. I was just thinking yeah. that too. I was like, man, the Labo is like you know, was, man, I bought that and I never opened it and I, I took it all back. It still seems kind of <laughs> cool, but uh, I, I could definitely see this being like a step up and like if Nintendo's able to keep you know pulling some you know cool things like this and especially with you know the fans, uh, you know, it, doing more stuff with it, it really opens it up, man. Like really have like some wild shit. I mean, I, I got would... no. Go ahead, uh, Ryan. Uh, I was just gonna say I got I got kind of lucky with the Labo thing because uh, my fr- my friend's kid got it and I was over there and he was like oh like help me you know put this together and help you know let's let's play this so like I played like the robot game and like all that stuff <laughs> and I got I got to play it all and had a blast and then was like okay I did everything so I'm good like I don't yeah. need yeah. to own it like I'm good you know it was fun I had fun. Yeah, it's, it's one of those things, like, I don't see people still playing with their Labo. I think it was one of those things that you put it together, and that was, like, kind of the journey itself is putting it all together and yeah. getting it all set up, and then you played a little mini game, and you're like, all right, I'm done. And, yep. you, you know, the thing about it is I would have loved to see a new Mario Kart. I think everyone would love to see a new Mario Kart, but this is pretty cool, too. And, I mean, this is one of those things is, you know, Nintendo started out as a card company, they, they really specialized in toys, and that's really what this is. It's a toy. It's a toy using your Nintendo Switch. I yeah. need some Labo guns, man, like for like, like <laughs> gun games, man. I'd be on board for that. <laughs> oh, speaking of guns, uh, just real quick, I uh, going to horror games real quick. I played this really, really bizarre duck hunting game um, for VR on Steam, and it is the most disturbing thing i think it's called duck season yeah it's definitely called duck season and uh it is so disturbing and it feels like you're playing old school duck hunt with the gun and everything and Mm -hmm. you're shooting the ducks and it's really really fun and really really cool and then like it just increasingly gets darker and darker and more fucked up and (laughs) and uh and and it basically all involves the dog and that's all i'm gonna say is the dog the dog uh is is a mean motherfucker. Where, where, where did you where did you play this? Was this like at an arcade or was it on a was it on Steam or? Yeah, this this is on Steam and I played it on v, uh, VR and oh, wow. uh, yeah, it's it's called uh, Duck Season and it is it's insane. It turns into this like because you you're like actually this kid like in like the late eighties and uh, you know you you with VR you put in the cartridge into the Nintendo. And, you know, you're you're playing the game and like you can play with little, you know, there's 80s toys around you and stuff. And it feels like being a kid again. You're all small and uh, it's, it's really cool. And your mom's like back there, like making uh, sandwiches and doing, you know, just doing stuff, ordering pizza or whatever. Just normal day to day stuff because it takes place over several days. And uh, as it goes on, like, you know, you'll turn your head and then it's like, oh, the dog's like, you know, outside the window looking at you with a camcorder. Like the dog wow. from the game from Duck Hunt, but that he's like a man, uh, but he's like a man in a dog suit, and he's like stalk- <laughs> so he looks, stalking. He looks like Barf in The Shining when he's blowing that guy, right? Like yes, oh, man, oh my god, horrible. holy shit! Yeah. And like I played it, and it freaked me the fuck out. And then like I was like, I told my wife, I was like, hey, you should play this like you know duck hunting game, <laughs> and she played it. And yeah, by the end, she was like screaming. She was like, ah, like what the fuck? Like it, it's so intense. Cool. And so, did you use like the mouse as like the gun? Uh, no, it actually uh, uses the um, the VR like the Oculus Quest controllers. Oh, okay. Yeah, and you have one like you're holding one like you're holding the barrel, and the other one like you know you're holding the trigger, and it actually feels very natural. It's it doesn't seem like it would, but it does. It's like the two motion controllers. I was gonna say they like the move controllers on. Uh, yeah, very on similar. PS4. Yeah, that's so cool. And, yeah, I've just, I don't know, I've always been, a, since I've been a kid, I, like, went to this uh, mall, and they had this little VR thing that was basically Doom in VR, and I played that, and I was like, this is the coolest thing I've ever seen in my life, and then, like, I never heard about VR again, except for the Virtual Boy, like, yeah. for a long time, a long time, and then now that VR is accessible, like, I, you know, I got the PlayStation one, I got the one on the PC now, I basically, I built out my PC for two reasons, uh, editing movie stuff, and VR. That's like the main yeah. thing. 
Yeah, I was about to say since our last episode with you last year, you've uh, you've really dived into the the PC realm of gaming, haven't you? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I I love Steam, man. I, I love Steam and oh, the yeah. Epic Store. It's so great because there's so many games that like I missed, and I'm I don't have like an older system because like usually when a, a new system comes out, I, I get the new one. I sell the old one. So like um, I don't have like a PS3. I don't anymore. I don't have a, a, an Xbox 360. So there's like some older games that like, you know, in between 360 and Xbox One or in between PlayStation 3 and and PlayStation uh, 4 that I like never played. Uh, So like Steam is a cool way for me to like actually do some like retro gaming because Mm -hmm. they have everything on there. Yeah, I was about to say what's cool is, I mean, you can go on Steam and you can get like, you know, Vanquish, you can get uh, like a lot of games that were on that 360 PS3 era. And I mean, it, it will play fine. You know, yeah. like I, my laptop plays those games great. I don't have like a top of the line laptop, but it, it, it's pretty decent. Like it does the, the job well. But if I want to play those games, I can go back and play those. It was like last night. I don't know what's been going on with me, but I've been having this hankering to either watch Lord of the Rings or to play Skyrim. I don't know what it is, but I was <laughs> went on I went on Steam and I was just like I almost bought like the remastered uh, Skyrim. I mean, I have Skyrim on the 360. I could play it on that, but I was just like, ooh, I kind of want to get the remaster and play it on the PC. <laughs> you you kind of wonder sometimes, like me, like I did throughout my life, I've always gotten on like certain kicks, and I think it has to do with like my personality or mental issues or things like that but it's like i'll get on kicks where it's like i'll watch a mafia movie and i'll be like and i get like mafia games and like dude, even my wife she was like you know just not a kick of that huh and i'm like yeah and it's like, yeah kimberly it's said bitter. the same thing to me she was like what's yeah. up because i like, i haven't had a chance to sit down and actually watch lord of the rings i was just like because i, I did find out they're coming out with the, the 4k ultra 4k uh version of the trilogy Oh, nice. And I was like, that's that's a weird like radio frequency that I'm like into Lord of the Rings right now. And all of a sudden, like, oh, I just found out they're coming out with this. Uh, it, it was just announced earlier this month. But uh, I was just watching clips of it on YouTube. And she's like, why are you? She's never watched Lord of the Rings. And she was just like, why are you just watching random scenes of Lord of the Rings? And I'm sitting there just watching it on, on like freaking YouTube in 4K. And I'm like, oh, man, I can't wait to sit down and binge watch this. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I, just, I get it's, it. It's, yeah, it's those little kicks, like I said, it, and it deals with anything. Like I said, it could be yak as a stuff, you know, like yak, but yak as a movies, I, yak as a this, and it just anything. And it's all because of mental problems. That's what it is. So, <laughs> I, I will, I will say this. <laughs> I will say this though. Uh, some of the footage in Lord of the Rings, like in the 4K, it was like 4K and 60 frames. I cannot watch that movie in 60 frames, like. I love 60 frames for like video games and some action movies like Transformers and stuff like that's great in in 30 uh, like 60 frames but Lord of the Rings in 60 frames looks like a lifetime movie. Like it just looks very cheaply made how everything's so just operish. Yeah, cuz it's so fluid and everything's so high definition. It's like you can see the it's like almost like you could see the zippers on the orgs like suits and stuff, man. It just takes yeah, away the I- magic. I, I've noticed that you get that like soap opera effect, you know. Yeah, I'm not a fan like, of it, that. It's just this like weird thing where it looks so good that it almost looks like it was filmed with like a camcorder or something. I yeah. don't know, but it's weird. It, it doesn't make sense, but uh, yeah. yeah, I've I've definitely seen that. Yeah, it's almost like you're you're behind the scenes watching it being filmed. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it doesn't feel as cinematic sometimes because I mm-hmm. think a lot of times it wasn't necessarily meant to be seen like that. Yeah, I mean, they go from, like, because, I mean, the, I know the standard, like, cinema, like, frames is, like, 24 to maybe to 30 yeah. frames. They go from, like, 24 to 60 frames. It's just, it, it's so much for your brain to handle. It's so crazy. But uh, going into the next uh, last little bit of news before we take our little break is uh, Analog. Analog has came out with another, and I don't want to say clone console because these are these are works of art. They're expensive, but they're works of art. They came out with the Turbo Graphics all-in-one console, and uh, what's really cool about this is called the Analog Duo. It's going to be playing, you know, the the Hue cards, the CD-ROMs. It's even got a uh, a thirty-dollar adapter for the Analog Pocket, so you can actually play Turbo Graphics Hue cards on the go as well. Um, 
I haven't really. I'm trying to see where the price tag is. Two hundred bucks. Yeah, two hundred bucks. I just saw that, and yeah, I mean, it even has like two USB ports for two wireless controllers, because uh, 8 Do, which is also owned by Analog, they had these uh, PCE 2.4 G controllers, and they look freaking awesome. I'm, I've been trying to debate if I wanted to get one or not because you can play on your Switch and uh, Raspberry Pi, but yeah, this this is really cool. I mean, I I admit I I have no interest to collect for the PC Engine or Turbo Graphics 16. It's a little too rich for my blood. But for those wanting to get into it and wanting to have that kind of console, this is something really really cool. Yeah, they're they're really you're not going to find a better deal on a system at any of these, and uh, lots of systems, especially the old uh, the CD based ones for the Turbo. Uh, you know, they they can deteriorate. Any of the U.S. ones, there's many parts. You usually have to replace capacitors and stuff. They're expensive. You're not going to get anything cheaper than this. And it's like, you know, this comes out on the tails. Like I said, it, it connected to the pocket, which, of course, I got one. So I'll be playing some Turbo Graphics on mine. I don't know how many other people will because there was that big debacle where people couldn't actually get them pre-ordered. You know, you couldn't yeah. pre-order it. Those ran out. Uh, but I was really hoping they would do that, and I guess they were saving it, you know, for this. Uh, this one, I hope they run it a little bit better. They did announce right off the bat, you know, limited quantities. Um, th we don't know what that number is, uh, you know, as far, as far as I know. So just, like, like hopefully people can get them, like I said, at that price. I mean, I paid 200 for the pocket analog. This thing does discs. Like I said, the Hue cards super graphics uh one of my things i'm wondering is will it play copied cds like the original yeah. did yeah all those systems 3do um you know and below sega cd neo geo cd uh they all played you, know, you could play burned cds on it and like i'm kind of wondering the the language on the website i didn't quite understand uh i'm kind of thinking if it is like the original hardware maybe it will they have nothing to gain you know, off, you know, cutting off piracy. Uh, yeah. Uh, we, we want piracy on this. So it's like, it's what we really want. And I'm also curious about like ever drives. Um, I, I did hear on one of the uh, pictures they had, which we don't know if it's a mock-up, uh, but they, and I heard him talking about this on the, on the CU podcast. Uh, I know a lot of people hate fucking Pat and Ian, but I was, I enjoy their show. Mm -hmm. And I know Ian's a big turbo guy. And he said, it looked like, uh, as far as the distance that the uh, Hue card went into the system, that certain games, uh, I think like the Street Fighter they mentioned and some other ones, like didn't seem like they would fit. And like this could be just an inaccurate mock-up picture yeah. that they didn't think about. Uh, but I do wonder, you know, and I, I wouldn't think they would have that, you know, cut, you know, cut that off. Uh, like I said, EverDrive. That would be, you know, great to have one of those, especially on the pocket adapter, just to have all the games there. Um, I've never really played any Turbo CDs. Uh, having that ability, you know, hopefully we'll learn more in time, like I said, if uh, you can copy them. Like, I watched a lot of videos earlier. Uh, there's about a billion uh, five to ten minute videos, and they all say exactly the same thing. Uh, <laughs> we're, yeah. we're doing the same thing right now, only we're admitting <laughs> we don't know shit about it. Exactly, uh, exactly. I mean, it's, it's cool. I mean, and it's FPGA, which means it's not... It, unlike, you know, a Raspberry Pi or even the TurboGrafx Mini uh, by the folks at M2, it's not emulation. Uh, it's not emulating hardware or it's not emulating software. It, it's pretty much the hardware, you know, built from the ground up into this console. So, I mean, you're getting a legit, you know, signal and they do a, a really fantastic job. I mean, they've made a couple of different consoles from like the Nintendo uh, to the Super Nintendo, to Sega Genesis, and even I believe the Sega CD as well. So, yeah, that yeah. one I don't. Yeah, I don't think they have a, a Sega CD one, which that one would be kind of cool. Uh, but yeah, it's definitely more you know high end stuff. Like I said, but it, this one especially for the price, man, I mean, you can't beat that. I'm, I'm really even debating it too because I'm like honestly, it's like I, I get it, you know, because I hear a lot of the uh, it, it's a pain. Uh, to kind of do the emulation for the uh, uh, Turbo CD games. Like, you can do it, but it's just a bit more of a hassle. And it's like, yeah. man, you could just burn off CDs and play it. I would think about this. The same thing with, like, the Polymega. 
uh, which like I said, my brother's getting one of those. So I'll actually be able, when he gets one, I'll be able to report more on how that works. But like, if you could play burn CDs on this thing, uh, it, it makes me want to get one, at least try to pre-order it. I mean, honestly, like if I get it and don't want it, I can, you know, like Ryan was saying earlier about selling stuff. If I knew somebody really wanted it, I would oh, yeah. sell it, you know, for what I got it for, if it was a friend or just a little bit overpriced, but I didn't want to keep it. But, uh, I might actually, try to get one of these because hey man i lucked out and i got the pocket so uh you know just it just set your alarm and you know hopefully their uh site doesn't crash and and, and you get it through it but like i said there, <laughs> there's no better deal uh you know like i said for the price for you know what this thing does even as super graphics i mean they only had five games for that i mean not, not to mention like the turbo duo uh the original turbo duo it has a lot of um issues where like i believe the capacitors start to wear yeah. out and stuff like that and people have to open it up and fix it i mean you won't have that issue with this so i mean for 200 bucks you're buying you know this this fpga console that plays everything that you don't have to worry about you know certain things you, and it plays all the original hardware it's upgrades to hdmi so you can hook it up to your new television you don't have to keep a crt there's just so much quality of life that goes into this that you know the price in my opinion really isn't too bad so so ryan let me, <laughs> ryan let me ask you what do you think about this Oh, I think it sounds awesome. I never had a Turbo Graphics or Sega CD or any of that. Like, uh, but I've played some of the games, you know, like through emulation. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I, I mean, I think that if you're a big fan of that, that's fucking amazing. Yeah. Yeah, and I mean two hundred dollars for something that you really give a shit about, and like you said, it's new, it's new hardware. It's it's the old hardware, but new. It's like that's fucking worth it. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Now, because if uh, you buy you buy one at a thrift store, you have no idea if it's going to actually work or how long it's going to work or what you know, all that stuff. So, indeed, indeed. Now, what we're going to do, guys, we're going to take a quick break, uh, and we're going to be actually playing a new song from the Casket Creatures called Bloody Mary. Now, before we get into this, uh, Ryan, I mean, I saw the music video on on your guys' YouTube channel, and I have to say, it was absolute genius. You know, with uh, the whole COVID-19, I know, uh, you know, back then we were really doing a lot of social distancing and quarantining. And uh, what, what what sparked up the interest being like, hey, let's let's film a Skype call and make it a music video. Yeah, I mean, um, so we kind of already had the idea for a Bloody Mary video where it was like the whole joke was going to be that we're all hanging out, partying and drinking as we do. That's what we're known for other than making music. And uh, we we're we we're like, yeah, you know, what if we're all partying and drinking? And then Derek says, like, you know, something about a Bloody Mary. And we're like, hey, don't say that. And he's like, no, I mean the drink. And then, you know, he, he's drinking a Bloody Mary. And then he like through through the back and forth conversation, we say it three times on accident. And then that spawns Bloody Mary. And then we all get chased by Bloody Mary. So basically, we took that idea that we originally had for the video since all this stuff was going on, and we're like, let's do that, film it like it's over Skype, and then uh, we will have like each of our girlfriends basically dressing up and playing Bloody Mary. Uh, yeah, so it's it was great. It's, yeah, it's three different Bloody Marys, you know, in the video. Um, so yeah, I don't know. It was uh, it was a lot of fun. We had a good time, and. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, you know, it's it's just uh, classic gas creatures. We like to not take ourselves too serious. We got a lot yeah. of humor and all of our stuff. So, you know, it's, it's it's a lot of fun. You know, it was really fun to make, and it was really, like, you know, cheap and, and, and a lot logistically easier than most of our videos. So uh, it was a win-win because people liked it. So. Yeah, guys, definitely go on YouTube.com and look up uh, the Casket Creatures and check out the music video. Uh, I'm about to play the song right now, but I'll, I'll, I'll tell you guys, definitely check out the video. I don't want to give out too much because there's so many funny moments, but the drummer, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> so sit back, relax, guys, and we'll be right back. Bloody Mary 
And we are back, guys. And again, that was Bloody Mary from the Casket Creatures. And we are joined with the uh, singer from the Casket Creatures, Mr. Ryan Cadaver. And yeah, this is a Halloween episode. So I thought we could dive into a little bit of Halloween stuff. Um, I have to admit, I didn't really prepare myself too much on this episode. Usually I have like a ton of different topics to talk about. But I mean, all of us love horror movies and, you know, I play with a horror punk band. Uh, You know, Ryan's in a horror punk band. Uh, James is one of the biggest supporters of horror punk and everything spooky in the night. So, I mean, let me ask you this, Ryan. Uh, To this day, what is one of your uh, most frightening games you've ever played? Uh, the original Resident Evil, still. Um, I remember getting that game. I mean, I was probably like seven, I think, when I got it. And uh, it was one, it was like the reason that we bought a PlayStation. Like, oh, I convinced yeah. my dad because I was like, I was like, Dad, look at this game. Like, it was like Game Informer had some pictures of it. And uh, my dad was like, Yeah, that looks awesome. Because we would watch like zombie movies and The Omen and The Exorcist. Like, this is when I was like seven or eight. Like, that's why I am the way I am. Um, so, uh, which is a good thing, but you know, so like, you know, like we were like, oh my God, this looks so realistic, which, you know, now, haha, it's kind of funny, <laughs> but, but at the time we're like, you know, oh my God, like this is incredible. And yeah, like just the, uh, the moment when you walk around that corner, I can still remember everything about it. I've played it a million times at this point, but yeah, um, going around the corner and seeing that first zombie, uh, chewing on the dude and him his head slowly turning around it's all like the white creepy looking zombie um that's probably the scaredest like i've ever been and then you're just like boom you're like in the room with and you got to figure out what to do of course if you're if you're jill you can just run into the other room barry shoots him but but yeah that was the scariest thing ever like i really legitimately it gave me nightmares but i kept wanting to play it and in fact i would usually let my dad play it but I like had I would draw out like a map of the mansion. And I knew where everything was, so like I would navigate and be like, "Now you have to go here and get this key and do this." And then he would actually play it because I was a little too scared to play it, but like I wanted to watch it, you know? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, for for me, like Resident Evil, it was almost like a religious experience because I mean, like we we've, we've all played like the zombie kind of games, you know, like Zombies Ate My Neighbors or you know even Doom, but. I think what it is about Resident Evil was it was the first game that I've ever played that made you feel helpless. It was always that game that you you always played the games where you had the upper hand, like oh you got to shoot zombies. Well, that's okay because you have a shotgun. And in this one, it was just like you got to kill zombies, but you have very limited health, you have very limited ammo. Uh, you here's gotta, a knife. <laughs> yeah, you, here's a knife, and and you know if you're if you're playing as Chris, that's all you have for a while. You know, yeah. luckily with Jill, you had a a, a nine millimeter, but that that was about it. And you yeah. know, when you have a nine millimeter, even so, when you're being chased by a, a zombie Doberman, holy crap! <laughs> oh yeah, it doesn't do much. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, that game scared the ever loving shit out of me. And I don't know, there's something about hard gaming in general that, like, especially like as they get you know better and better throughout time, like. I don't know. There's something scarier. Like I'm playing Outlast 2 right now, just because I never, I never played that one. 
And uh, there's someone just so much scarier. Like, if I was watching this as a movie, I'd be kind of like, eh, whatever. Like, you know, it's a creepy thing. Yeah. But, like, pl- playing it is, like, so much scarier. I don't know why. Like, getting chased and being helpless in a game is w- just way scarier than watching a movie where somebody's getting chased and being helpless. It's like you add that in too. Like sometimes, like like I'm uh, consider myself a little bit more terrible at games, and like that makes it even a bit more, you know, frightening. Uh, for me, I'm definitely Xander. You brought up the dogs. I mean, the dogs were that's just like prime. You know, everybody jumped at that. Oh yeah. Uh, but oh two, yeah. Two more of the ones that really kind of got me were still the original Clock Tower. On, yes. Uh, PlayStation Fucking Billy. One fucking goddamn scissor man like it was just something it was it was goofy but damn it's like it something just really like bugged you out and uh and these are games like i said i play maybe a little bit you know a little bit older than you guys uh you know i played in my 20s and stuff or late teens like it was that one and even a fatal frame Uh, oh yeah uh, fatal frame i think it was the first one on uh probably on xbox or something i remember me and my friend playing it and like you look down the hall, like dude, there's something down there. Like, dude, that game was so freaky like, and like I don't want to go. And it, like, it was no, there was not that was the worst thing or the best thing either. There was nothing down the hall. It was just something on the wall and the graphics we thought was a ghost and we didn't want to go down there. Yeah, but sometimes there like the cool thing about that game is like sometimes there would be a ghost, but sometimes they're just chilling. They're just like, what's up? Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> we all saw absolutely nothing. That's what we saw. We still yeah. got freaked out. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, I uh I remember uh like, you know, the first time I played Silent Hill. You know, I played Resident Evil before Silent Hill. And you yeah. know, Resident Evil scared the hell out of me. Silent Hill though made me feel like I was like not only scared, but I was like almost doing something wrong. If that makes yeah. any sense. Like it just it, it was like one of those games that while I was playing it, I was kinda like looking over my shoulder to see if like my 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 parents were looking at what I was playing because I'm like running down you know this foggy street and all of a sudden there's like a bloody wheelchair and a kid going after me with a butcher knife. I was just like, I can't believe this is a video game. This is like some crazy stuff, you know? Yeah, it, it gave me the same feeling as like the first time I saw Hellraiser, where I was like, I've seen horror movies, but this is like psychologically damaging. Yeah, it just makes <laughs> it's like this that is weird, fucked up. It's just that weird, uneasy feeling. But like, should should I be should I be playing this? Like, this is crazy. Oh, yeah. But I mean, I could, ne- I could never beat the first Silent Hill. Like, I mean, I, I probably didn't, you know, give it a fair enough shot. But like, I really loved it. But like, I think I just got to like the school, and I just kept getting killed by little kids, and I was terrified. And I was like, no, I can't do it. I mean, what's really this- cool is the uh, the the Wii one because it's pretty much like a remake. Uh, was it Froze, Frozen Memories? Oh, yeah, Sh- Memories. Shattered Memories. Yeah. Shattered Memories. Yeah. I, I played that one. It was good. Yeah, yeah that was pretty much like a, like a remake of the first one. So it's like you, you can have I mean, gone through that one. It's like at least gave you the experiment. It was really cool, you know, if they did that. I mean, the Wii had some really cool, uh, you know, games. You know, it had some great horror level. games. A lot of people talk about the Wii like it's a kitty console, but it had a, actually a lot of good horror games on it, too. Oh, they did. It had the best version of Resident Evil 4, in my opinion. Yeah, I agree. By far. Like, that version is, to me, the premier version. I've had it on almost every console because that's what they do, and I keep buying it because I love that game. But, like, the Wii version was so good, and the motion controls actually really helped you. Like, they really benefited that that clunky kind of controls that it had the Wii actually made it better yeah yeah I, you I agree. could quickly just take out some dudes shoot them right in the face it's in like edit i throw into that game i don't know if you played it but it was one it really used the uh wii modes for the speaker there was a game called the calling uh it was kind of like a, a japanese style uh, horror game where a bunch of dead japanese girls like in the school but they would make sounds that would come through the wii mote oh and then, wow uh, yeah, like that was really cool, and they also had a Juon, the Grudge, which was kind of a, a on rails haunted house game. Um, and these are ones like this was maybe five or so years ago. I bought a couple of these games, and they were still about thirty bucks. Um, and there's really nothing else kind of like them, so I imagine they they might have gone up in price. But uh, both of those are still like like very cool games that are not on any other system. And it's really kind of cool. They kind of embraced 
you know, the kind of J horror thing going on at the time. And I think a lot of people like really might have missed out on this game. That speaker on the Wiimote, you know, just coming through. I mean, I like literally just kind of sends chills down your spine. And then a little bit later it comes a little bit irritating sometimes with that one fat ghost that like keeps uh calling you and stuff but it's still it's still kind of creepy man i don't know why this made me think grant that thought of four and he said the fat ghost (laughs) he goes in i totally thought of grant thought of four too because he said because he said calling you and he said annoying and i thought grant thought of four (laughs) i just i get all all of a sudden i got uh, like flashbacks of grant that thought of four (laughs) But yeah, the, the Wii had a, had a lot of good horror games. I mean, I like the um, the Dead Space game that was on the Wii as well. Oh yeah, that, that was, was fun. That was a lot of light fun. gun game. Pretty well. It was it was a you know still at the basis a light gun game, but had a a little bit more to it. Uh, De- Dead Space something start with an R. Mm-hmm. I, I can't remember the uh, the full name of it. Like so that was great. Uh, I was a big fan of Cold Mountain. Uh, I could see. That oh yeah, that. I played you that. Know, you played that. I can see that being yeah. boring to some people. It was very cheap. It was probably like a seven dollar game at GameStop. But man, dude, like I like, I played a lot of that game. I mean, the Wii had really had some really great like uh, horror titles. I mean, I really suggest people uh, you know find those you know before we raise the price you know of those games by mentioning them you know. At the, at the stores, <laughs> yeah, and it, yeah, it was the, uh, it was Dead Space Extraction. That's, oh yeah, that's, yeah. That's, yep, that's what it was. I think the reason I bought a Wii, like I was kind of a holdout on it, and uh, I think the reason I bought it was for that Dead Space game and for uh, the Resident Evil Dark Side Chronicle games. Oh yeah, oh, Umbrella Chronicles. Yeah, Umbrella Chronicles. Yeah, or maybe the second one was like Dark. Chronicle? Yeah, I don't yeah know. something had dark. There was two of them. One was Umbrella Chronicles. Chron- Chron- yeah, whatever. Umbrella Chronicles, and the second one was Dark something. Yeah, there yeah. were two of them, and they were a little bit. You know, they weren't a straight up light gun game, uh, which that's still one of the systems, man. Like I said, uh, if you love light gun ba- games, invest in a, a VR or check out you know old Wii games. Uh, and I mean, they, they really nailed it. But the Umbrella Chronicles had like a little bit more to it, and you got to see a lot of stuff in the stories. Uh, of the Resident Evil series that they covered, you know, a uh, couple of different series, you know, like one, two, three, throughout the games. But you saw some stuff that happened in between that they didn't really cover. Uh, yeah. And they were a little I, bit more interactive than a straight up light gun game. You know, they were they were tough, but you had to do a little bit more. It was awesome, too, because, like, I was such a diehard Resident Evil fan that I could, like, have one of my friends over and be like, hey, like, we can play through the story of Resident Evil 2 together with light guns. Yeah, you know, and it, it covers this whole, the whole story basically, uh, and uh, yeah, like you said, it added more to it also with like Wesker and all this like behind the scenes stuff. So yeah, yeah, and I absolutely loved uh, like Dead Space. Like that was oh man, the first two it's Dead a- Space were just amazing games. Such a great series. Now, did you did you ever play Dead Space three? Yeah, I did. I I didn't hate it. I guess there were some people that didn't like it as much because it was a little more action. It. Yeah, I, never I heard it. I heard that people didn't like it because it was a little more actiony, kind of like Resident Evil Six kind of went, you know. Yeah, uh, but I I liked all three of them. I mean, I think two's the best. Like two mm-hmm. is like perfect, uh, and one was just creepy as all fuck. Yeah, the first Dead Space made me think of like Alien. You yeah, know? and and we we wouldn't have like an actual game that captured alien like dead space until like alien isolation you know years later which is still just a phenomenal horror game like, i fucking love that game it's so good uh, i actually that may be one i may revisit soon because uh, yeah, i still yeah. got it on ps4 well yeah well i'm wondering too like if you have uh you know the oculus uh is like isn't there a uh a virtual reality version of it yeah, I think it's a I think it's a mod. I don't okay. think it's like an official okay. thing, but there is because I've seen people talk about it. Uh, I have not looked into uh, into that too much, but oh my god, that may be too scary in VR. Like Jesus Christ! Yeah. Like, did you play the uh, Resident Evil Seven in VR? I have it, and I really haven't delved into it into the uh, you know virtual reality as much. Uh, did yeah, you play I, that one any? I kind of played it like part virtual reality and part like you know controller because mm-hmm. like some of it kind of made me feel a little nauseous 
Some games yeah. still still make me feel like something like Squadrons, where you're like sitting in a car a cockpit and you're like, you know, I'm playing in my chair and flying around shooting tie fires. Like that's like amazing. I can handle that. But anything where you're like moving around a whole lot, like walking, and you're not actually walking in real life, it like kind of fucks with me. Like I, it, you know, what got me was playing a uh, like a first person like dungeon crawler game. That was literally the only one that made me feel like not well. Yeah, it. and it's like a basic game. I might have been drinking. I like that might have had something to do with it. I don't know, but something about it. It just uh, it, that one. I felt like a little off afterwards. And I was like, I can yeah. do the roller coasters in the shark cage, and I was like, Yeah, I'm like I'm good. But like, no, I don't know. This is a old school the dungeon crawler. Like I, got, I can't do this. Like, yeah, it, there's definitely like uh, certain games that are totally fine with me, and I can play them for hours and hours and hours. And then there's some games that like made me feel off. And uh, Resident Evil Seven was one of those that made me feel a little weird. Mm-hmm. But uh, but but I did like it. Um, and it was creepy as all shit, of course. Yeah, I need to go yeah, back should... and play that. I haven't played Resident Evil Seven since it came out. It's a good time of year to play it, you know, because like I'm debating it myself too. I was like, dude, I really need to jump onto like the VR. It's like, I cause like I want to try that because like I can sit and play the shooting range games on VR for like three hours. Like that's no problem because you know, light gun fanatic. So it's like that's <laughs> that's that's what to play. But I'm like, yeah, I think I'm gonna check out the uh, Resident Evil Seven. You should. Soon. It's creepy as fuck. Yeah, it's so good. Be scary. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna piss my pants playing. <laughs> uh, yeah, there was like, there's like one part in the beginning where you're like that the chick is like stabbing you in the arm and like you know I think she may even cut off your arm or hand or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and that part in VR, like it, like I was like, God, I kind of want to take my goggles off to make sure my <laughs> fucking hand is still on. Like it's so fucking visceral and fucked up. Man, gee, so, so, so we're getting, uh, we're getting close, close to the end. Uh, but before we get into games we've been playing, um, I want to ask you, Ryan, if you could tell the listeners one horror game to play on Halloween, what game would you recommend? Ooh, one horror game to play. Let's see here. Like, it doesn't matter what console. This is this is a kid that has everything. He's like, oh, I got all the consoles, but for some reason he doesn't have all the games. So you got to help him out. Silent Hill, <laughs> Silent Hill Two. Oh yeah, that's a great one. That would be mine. I I think that's like the perfect horror game. Like it's I don't know. It's so unsettling and so psychologically damaging and so creepy. And the character design, like all the creature design, is amazing. That would probably be mine. What about you, James? Oh man, I still. Uh, I was trying to think of it while Ryan was giving his answer. Uh, the, I still would say like like Clock Tower. I mean, like, just check it out. Like, I'd imagine to some, like, it might be, like, a little cheesy. But I still think the tenseness, you know, could get you. Because, like, it does have more of that, you know, like, point and click, you know, style. Uh, or even, hey, if I'm going to go in that, too, I'll still throw in Shadowgate. Uh, if I can give two answers. Because uh, Shadowgate, whether you're doing, you know, old, very old, like, M- MS-DOS or Macintosh or whatever it was on. If you want to go for the Nintendo version, or there's even an updated version now that you can play, you know, on Xbox, PlayStation, uh, all the graphics are updated. It's still a, uh, you know, a really cool, creepy game. It's kind of, you know, uh, you know, dragons and some, you know, trolls and shit like that. So if you like Lord of the Rings, you might like it too. But it also <laughs> has like, some spooky shit. Uh, in it you know that that can kind of just really throw you off and like you die a lot and uh it's got some really uh, you know cool stuff to it cool music uh even the newer version has it where you can play the uh the old music for it or oh, that's cool new soundtrack yeah so i mean uh, that's uh, those are both great ones clock tower and shattergate i think i think mine is uh, I, I have a standard now uh, and and you know it is a PS4 game, but I think all you guys can agree uh, the remake of Resident Evil Two. Mm. That is that's just a perfect, it's perfect. That's a perfect horror video game, man. I mean, like I I I, I was the person who loved Resident Evil Three remake as well. I, Me too. I, I loved it. I know some folks didn't like the length of it. I thought it was perfect. It captured everything I wanted. You know, because it was a side story anyway. It wasn't. It wasn't a full on adventure. It was just kind of showing you what was going on with Jill while the events were happening in Resident Evil Two. I was like, "This is great," and you know, 
me and my girlfriend played it and we loved it. And then I was just like, okay, now I'm going to show you Resident Evil 2 remake. And we couldn't get that far through it because she was like, it was starting to give her an anxiety attack. Like, <laughs> and I was like, wait till Mr. X comes up. You know? <laughs> oh, dude, when that happened, oh. I guess that's, that's my only, it's not a complaint, but that's like my only like big, big edge that I'll give to you, other than replayability. Like two, like what Mr. X is so fucking terrifying and Nemesis is scary, but like, I always felt like it was more like I knew when he was going to be there, Yeah, you know? And like Mr. X, I was like, I was like legitimately like, how the fuck did he get here? What the fuck? Oh my God. I'm going to die. Like, yeah, I was cause, terrified. Yeah. Cause he would show up in like uh, the other side of the freaking police station. Yeah. Like, just randomly. It was almost like he was like Jason in the, in the Michael Bay Friday the 13th that had like underground tunnels and shit, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So yeah, that was, uh, that was absolutely scary as fuck. Also, real quick, a uh, suggestion for Halloween night, if you want a game. I'm really ridiculously excited about uh, the Dark Pictures anthology. I don't know if y'all played Man yes. of Medan. Man of Medan, Chris, mm -hmm. Until Dawn. Yeah. Wait, wait, not Until Dawn, I'm sorry. Yeah, wait, uh, Until Dawn. Yes, that is it. Okay, yeah. I was thinking of Just Before Dawn, which is an awesome movie. Everybody should watch that, too. But yeah, so they're, <laughs> they're releasing, like, you know, one a year or whatever of these. And uh, the new one is called Little Hope, and it, I think it's about witches, and it looks really fucking creepy. And that that comes out like on Halloween or before Halloween, so that's like a spooky recommendation because I already know that team is fucking awesome and it's gonna rule. Yeah. So that's I one. need to finish Man of Me Dan still. Like I like I hate it because like I loved Until Dawn so much and it's like I started Man of Me Dan and like I didn't finish it and so now it's almost like man that'd just be a great series. Like I need Until to, Dawn. I need to Man check that Dan. out. Play the next one. Well, um, so you you know you're talking about gaming with your girlfriend. The cool thing about Man and Vadon is like it's technically co-op, uh, and like what happens is like you have your team of like you know survivors in a horror movie, like your characters, and you can each pick like the ones that you want to be throughout the story, and it's like a choose your adventure thing. But like you get oh, yeah. to play as them, so like you'll watch you know, and you can do it online too or or together couch co-op. But like you know, you'll be playing as your dude. And then like some stuff happens to you and then his part of the story ends and then it goes to the next character and then, you know, maybe she'll be playing a character like it's it's really cool how that works. Uh, and it, it worked really excellent. Like we played it co-op and played through the whole thing and we were super engaged the entire time and we were each responsible for our people making it to the end of the thing because oh, they could die so cool. that is so cool we'll, we'll yeah. get a good price too because i believe uh the last one's man of media and such i think they're like 30 bucks um yeah. so it definitely a little bit more bargain priced game and, and like you said one that was one of the ones me and my friend with a uh, game share i was like dude i'm getting that like so like i definitely even if i don't finish them all the time i always buy their games uh, and I'm, I, that's what I'm going to do for Halloween this year. So I'm going to go through, I'm going to finish Man of Me Dan. I'm going to get the next one. Yeah. Cause, uh, until Dawn was fantastic. And it like, it was like kitchen sink car. Like it had everything, monsters, yeah. ghosts, murders, like every Camps, fucking killer, at camp, every single horror thing is in that game. And then Man of Me Dan is a lot of, it's a departure and it's a very focused story. But like, um, and it's, it's on a spooky it's, ship, though. Spooky but it is on a spooky awesome. ship, and it it is very well done. Like by the end of it, I was like, "Oh my god, I did not see that coming." So that's like a a, a good recommendation. Nice, nice. Now, uh, getting into games we've been playing, uh, I I'm, I'm gonna start off real quick because I haven't been playing a, a whole lot of stuff, but I I did have a little bit of a rant that I have to I have a bone to pick with Sega right now. Okay. Oh no. Yeah, no. yeah, I got a little bone to pick with them because I'm I'm kind of upset they did this. Okay, so you know Sega's celebrating their their 60th anniversary and they released two games. Okay, they released uh, Streets of um, Komarocho, Komarocho. Yep. which I, I did a let's play of that. I mean, it was one level which didn't bother me because it was free. It was like a little montage to a little tribute to Streets of Rage with the Yakuza, and then they did a Golden Axe prototype called Golden Axed. Uh, it was a, a prototype that never came out, and again, that was also free, and I believe it's only one level. I haven't had a chance to play it, but I did download it, and I'm yeah, so glad it's, I it's did. one level. I'm so glad I did download it, because this is what I have a bone to pick with them. So they announced these games, and they were like, oh, these are going to be limited time on Steam. These games only lasted one day on the Steam store. 
Why? Yeah. Like, who does that benefit? <laughs> exactly. I it wasn't on consoles. I'm like, well, at least I can kind of laugh because you only got it one day on Steam. So. I was just like, really? Because I, I, I uploaded my video to uh, Streets of Comorocho, and like one of my uh, viewers, he was like, hey, you know, I watched a video, and I went on Steam, and I went to go download, and I couldn't find it anywhere. And our, our friend Justin, you know, down Phoenix, he was like, yeah, they already pulled it off of Steam. It was only up for a limited time. And I'm like... It was. It's only twenty four hours. Like really? Have you actually checked your Steam library? Is it still in there? Yeah, yeah. Like I, I have the game. Like it's not going anywhere. I have it. But like for folks that may have like say someone watched my Let's Play right now, and they're like, oh wow, I'd love to check this out. They can't download it. That's wow. ter that's terrible. Yeah, that, sucks. that really sucks. Uh, yeah, I. I started uh, the streets and and like it's like most beat 'em up games. It's not my genre. I totally get the appeal, uh, and I love like beat 'em ups like Yakuza mainly because the story and like all the side stuff. Yeah, but like the side scrolling beat 'em beat 'em up games, like I always buy them, and then I'm always like, oh, this is cool, and then I can never finish them. Yeah, like, no, I, I, got, I get that. I get that. Yeah, I like them. I just you know so like I started that one. I beat up a couple people, and I was like, I'm good. No, nah, I get that because I mean a lot of beat 'em up games get kind of repetitive. Yeah, and even streets... I liked them back in I liked them back in the day, but that was because it's all I had. <laughs> yeah, well, sometimes too, like it depends. Like if you have a friend you're playing with, most like, definitely, the, the, yeah, that can kind of help. So one day, man, me and you will play some beat 'em ups, man. It'll be better. <laughs> oh hell yeah, <laughs> you'll love it. More. <laughs> I'm down. So so yeah, I, I've been playing that, um, and you know I've been playing a little bit of Animal Crossing here and there. I haven't been playing Animal Crossing as much. Pretty much, I've just been logging on Animal Crossing, buying Halloween stuff, and then logging off. <laughs> but uh, and, and and playing Super Mario Thirty Five. Like oh my god, Super Mario Thirty Five is our is like me and my girlfriend's crack right now. Like that's how she starts her mornings. I start my morning with a coffee and a cigarette. She starts her mornings with uh, Super Mario Thirty Five. It, you know, I don't know what that is. It's a free to play. Uh, if you have Switch Online, it's free, and it's a Mario Battle Royale. Whoa! Of the original Mario, and what's crazy is every stage is like based off the first Mario Brothers, but it's all randomized, and there's 35 people playing at one time, and you know it's battle whoever is the last one standing. And what makes it really interesting is you know enemies that you kill or enemies that other folks kill will transfer to your screen. So say, you know, you're at the very end, you're like the top five, and someone keeps going through the castle stages, they'll send a bunch of Bowsers to to your stage. Even if you're on 1-1, one, one, there's like Bowsers instead of Goombas. <laughs> oh, oh it my is, God. It is so good. And, uh, yeah, that's what we've been playing. And that's that's pretty much what I've been doing. I mean, I, I played some Dreamcast today, actually. I, I went and played some... Um, Fighting Vipers 2, I played some Hydra nice. Thunder, and then I was playing some, um, I, I found a ISO of uh, Yu Suzuki's works, which was a compilation only in Japan, and it was a, um, a compilation of, you know, OutRun, uh, I believe, uh, Hang On, Space Harrier, and like one more other game, and, you know, games I've, I have plenty of copies of, but I don't know why, I was like, I'm going to play this on my Dreamcast emulator, <laughs> so... I was playing that, and um, I think I think that's about it. That's about it for me. W what about you, Ryan? Um, so yeah, I uh, I have been going through my backlog during all this stuff. So uh, I finally like beat The Witcher Three, which I've owned for like a million years. It feels like. Yeah. Uh, but I finally beat I finally beat it. I beat all the DLC. Oh, Highly wow. recommended if you want to if you want to kill a lot of time because it's long as shit. But uh. But it was really great. Uh, playing squ uh, Squadrons, Star Wars Squadrons, um, off and on. I really am enjoying that in VR. Like I said earlier, uh, in a, I think off fair. Um, I don't know that it's a game that I would like uh, 2D, but like in VR, amazing, incredible. Uh, and then yeah, other than that, um, yeah, I haven't been playing a whole lot. I beat Yakuza Three the other day, so I never played oh, that nice. one. Nice. So uh, I, I liked. I, I, liked I finally. Three. I did too. I. I like I kind of liked all the little weird slice of life stuff at the you know the orphanage and all that. I liked all that. <laughs> the orphanage. So uh, yeah, I remember. Yeah, I, I, I dug it. I remember when <laughs> I first played it. When I first played Yakuza Three, I was like, 
I was like, oh, this is kind of a slow burn. And I remember like James told me he was like, man, it's, it's good. It's good. And I more I played it, I was like, I, I liked it because it kind of showed the softer side of Kiru. Like that was the first time we actually saw like that soft side of him, you know? Yeah, it, it goes yeah. back to where that was a hard rep, like as much as I, you know, fought for Yakuza back in the day. Now it's a phenomena, you know, uh, like it's okay, but I, I – that was one that was a hard recommend to tell people if they had a PS3. I would usually tell them to skip three and go to four um, just because of that orphanage stuff. Because, like, if you're not involved in the story and you hadn't been playing it for, you know, a few years, like, that was kind of a weird, you know, a lot of people are going to like, what the fuck is this? Like, it, yeah, you know, it, I get like, that. It, 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 orphanage. So it's like, I would tell people, like, just skip it, you know. But now, yeah. You know, that it's out, it's in the mainstream, people have played zero, they played one, they played two. They have a easier time, I think, like, accepting that, you know, and going into uh, four, which is awesome. I know you've told me, like, uh, I guess if you beat three, you probably go into four, and like I said, five, still one of my favorites. Um, five is probably still my favorite, has some of the best fishing, um, uh, a, 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 a new character, the baseball guy. Uh, who's he's just completely different than the other ones, you know, which now and nowadays you usually get to play as a couple of different ones, um, you know, which is really cool. But like I said, just that, that orphanage thing, it, it was really a hard sell a at the first. And I just, I didn't want to turn anybody off with that. Cause I could just see somebody like, what, like, what is this? Like, yeah, you know, like it, feel, it feels my first, ah. it feels my first one. If it was my first one, I would definitely be like, "What?" But like the fact that I, like I've grown to like love Kiru right. so much uh, that like you know I think he's like one of my favorite like you know protagonists like in gaming he, like oh, he's so dude, awesome. He's just he he's a good guy. He's a badass. He's like he he yeah. really is like a hero. He's one of those people like I. It sounds funny, but it's like I look up to him. Oh you yeah, know? like yeah, in a game. But it's like it, he's he's a good guy to like model yourself after. You know. Absolutely. Like, he's constantly throwing out, like, life lessons in that game, and you're just like, damn, he's right. Holy shit. Yeah. That is, that's something it's, I it's... really liked about that. And, I, you know, I'm looking forward to, uh, like, a dragon that comes out next month. Um, oh, dude, I'm so excited. That's the first game I'm downloading when I get my Xbox. I, I Man, I was listening to a, uh, another podcast, and these folks had already played like a dragon because uh, they're, you know, it's a bigger podcast, so they got review copies and stuff. And one of the guys was like, I'm just like, can I get a review copy? <laughs> oh my God, I've been freaking for years. Yeah, like, uh, like he, he described like a dragon. He was like, man, it's like Persona, but with middle aged guys who love video games. <laughs> and dude, <laughs> that spoke to me on so many levels because, you know, this is an RPG. It's not you know, your standard beat em up Yakuza game. But the fact that, you know, the jobs you get in this game are kind of like the jobs that, you know, go on into your, you know, fighting and your parties and stuff. Like, okay, there, there's one job, and I'm not going to talk about it too much because I, I do want to leave that level of surprise for you guys. But I will, I'll just mention one job. Okay, you can become a host, and the perk of being a host is you can charm your enemies so you can steal from them, or you can fight them with vicious paper cuts from your business cards or hit them in the face with glass uh, ashtrays. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome i was like oh my god this is uh, and so much i heard about the game i'm like oh i cannot wait Th Freaking... that's really extra brutal because like i actually know a guy whose uh ex-girlfriend threw an ashtray at his head one time so uh that, I don't know. those things are thick like a, like a dude that could kill you he's probably lucky he's not dead I, those I, ashtrays were thick back then man they had some weight to them i remember them it's like you, you just never know. It's like, it's just that size. We had one. My grandpa had one, little, like a little like monkey, or like I can mention, like that probably would have been better. But yeah, <laughs> even ones now, <laughs> they got those uh, hexagonal edges. Like, oh yeah, terrible. But uh, James, what have you been playing? Uh, I've actually I, I played a few things this week. I actually for the first time I tried Rastan Three. This is a game oh. I, uh, I I didn't know existed actually until a couple of years ago. Uh, it was an arcade game. Uh, I was a big fan of the original Rastan on the Master System, you know, in the arcade. Uh, Rastan Saga, it was either Rastan Saga or Rastan, called Rastan Saga 2. Uh, not a big fan of that. 
Uh, but this one was was very cool. Like if you like Golden Axe, like you could dig this one. Uh, my only beef with it is it doesn't have a throw. And uh, as Ryan was saying, like sometimes with beat 'em ups, he's not the biggest fan. I, I'm a huge fan of beat 'em ups. Uh, I love that genre, but like if you don't have a throw, that just really can kind of ruin it for me sometimes. Um, but it's still a cool game. It was one of those ones that was on a multi-screen, uh, kind of like X Men back in the day. Um, so it, it was one, like I said, I just I, I didn't know it existed. Uh, I did get to play WrestleFest, also an old arcade game. Uh, got to play that with a friend. Um, love the old WWF games. Superstars is awesome. Like a tag game, WrestleFest added the steel cage, had like a Royal Rumble. Uh, my friend run the won the Rumble, uh, which was just cool to see my friend win and not the computer. And uh, we were fighting in the tag team mode, and we got up to the uh, the Road Warriors. You know, rest in peace, Animal and Hawk. Uh, oh hell yeah! And they beat our ass, and one dude they just come. They completely squashed us. Uh, it just looked like a, a fucking jobber match, like on uh, NWA back in uh, 1986. It was pretty brutal, but uh, that was really fun. Uh, and I will throw in a couple of things I've been watching, because like I said, it's Halloween. Um, early on, I tried to dive into the season, because I just really wanted to embrace it. Um, but, you know, just work and just life and everything just hits you, and it's just like, ah, oh, but you got to try to appreciate, you know, Halloween. So I've been watching a lot of Twilight Zone, uh, which is on Hulu. Uh, we actually saw the very famous episode with uh, William Shatner, uh, where he goes into the old diner and there's like a little devil head fortune teller machine. Um, I had never seen that one before. And uh, that one was was really good. I mean, uh, Twilight Zones are great. You can uh, kind of look through the synopsis of the episode and see if it's something, you know, you're into. Uh, there's lots of different topics, and some of them just like, yeah, I'm like, I don't know if I want to watch that. But that one really got me. I'd say, hey, Charlie Brown, Peanuts Halloween. It's kind of a topic now because apparently it's been taken off of TV. You can't watch it on there. I haven't had cable in many years. It's only on CBS, I think, uh, CBS All Access. But uh, actually, it's on YouTube, if you don't mind watching oh, it yeah. in many different parts. Um, Tourist Trap, it, that's such an amazing movie. Um, that one is definitely on YouTube. So if anybody wants to see a movie that still freaks me out, it has mannequins mannequins bug many people out and this has lots of those it also has a uh, donna's mom from that 70s show uh it back in her heyday you know in the uh, late 70s early 80s uh i recently also got a puppet master box set i signed up for the full moon streaming service oh uh, nice is, if you sign up for that uh it's a deal where they send you a 12 movie blu-ray box set uh, if you sign up for a year and it's 60 bucks to sign up, I mean, it's full of movies. Some of them are awesome. Some of them are terrible. I mean, I don't know. Do you like, do you like killer bong? I mean, if you do, <laughs> you know, it, it is, might be the service. You, it does have a lot of, uh, you know, really good, uh, blue underground, uh, which is a, a really, they put out a lot of horror DVDs. There's lots of good old Italian Lucio Fulci movies. It is, a, it is a good service, but like I said, if you sign up for a year straight up ahead of time, no strings attached. They send you uh, free shipping, a 12 DVD Blu-ray set of all the Puppet Master movies. And I'd seen like one through six. And there's like apparently six more uh, after that, which I haven't seen. So uh, I, I got that, which that's awesome. And um, another one I would throw in a, a, as a final, we know all the classics, you know, Garfield Halloween, Charlie Brown Halloween, as I said. I would highly recommend watching the King of the Hill Halloween episode um, where, you know, Hank gives Bobby his old devil's uniform and he ends up because the town is kind of against Halloween. There's a psycho religious lady, you know, nothing against religious people. Just don't turn against Halloween. That, that's the only thing. But this lady had an issue and Hank, he fought back and you got to see that really cool side of Hank where he loved Halloween. Yeah. Cause usually he's lie. like such a boy scout. You Dude, know? He is. I'm not going to lie. I shed a tear man at the end of this episode. Like it got me and I put it on a pedestal 
with uh, you know Charlie Brown and Garfield and all, and all of that. So it's like if you've seen all those before and you haven't seen the King of the Hill Halloween episode, I highly highly recommend that. I mean, it was just it. It you know it just it, it topped things off like like that's what I'm gonna remember I think uh, this year you know of all the crap going on I'm like I watched that King of the Hill episode uh, about Halloween I mean it, it was it was great so you know this is about it for me indeed indeed and I, I think this is gonna wrap up another episode of XS Gaming before we leave uh, Ryan. How about you tell uh, some folks where we, they, they can find some of your stuff? I mean, your music, your candles, all that jazz. Yeah, uh, so our, our Cadaver Candle Company is on uh, Big Cartel, so you can just search for us on there. Uh, the Cast Creatures, best way to keep up with us is on Facebook. Um, and uh, I'm Ryan Cadaver on all the social medias. And, uh, yeah, just, you know, give us a Google and check it out. And, uh, like I said, we'll be posting about our new movie. I can't say too much now because we haven't even announced the title or anything, so... You know, but all all I'm gonna say is like we're over halfway through it, and like it's it's incredible. Like it's so next level compared to the the movie we did before, which I'm still very proud of. But uh, there's a, a obvious progression. <laughs> indeed, indeed, and, and guys, all that information will also be in the description of this episode as well. And you know, if you enjoyed this episode. Be sure to check us out and leave us a review on all your favorite podcast catchers. I'm talking about Spotify, iTunes, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, or also check out my YouTube channel at youtube.com slash Scolian, and you can listen to some archived uh, XS Gaming podcast episodes. Hell, you could go back and listen to all of our Halloween episodes with, with Ryan. I think we, this is like our, what, like sixth or seventh uh, anniversary. Yeah. <laughs> it's been it's been a, it's been a good ride so far. So you hey, uh, have me back out. for Christmas. I would uh, yeah, love to do that. Yeah, definitely. Oh, no, we will. I think we did that one time. We did. Like, we yeah. did. We'll be back again before Halloween. Indeed, indeed. Anyway, guys, as always thanks for listening. I hope you guys have a very spectacular Halloween, and as always, happy gaming. Have a pleasant evening, everybody. Happy Halloween. <laughs> <laughs>